Let's, uh, let's get going. A question? Let's do it. Well, I gotta find it. Okay. Uh, while he's finding it, let me tell you what we're doing. We are finishing up the chapter. We have two more topics to do, two more applications of the integral. We'll derive each of these. Okay. We have centroid of lambda as a constant density. In count three, though, you do the better problem. The better problem is finding centers of mass of solids of non-constant density, where the density is allowed to vary continuously. You have an object with a continuously changing density. And you still want to find the center of mass of this object. It's pretty cool stuff. Uh, but anyhow, we'll do it uh, centroids of um, lamina as a constant density. And then we do fluid force, submerge something, and find the total force on that object. So we'll do those two topics. Monday, what we're going to do is um, um, do the lab and we'll review. I'll probably just do what I did last time, make a list of questions similar to those that you're going to see on the test, so you don't get stuck in the test. And we'll go over that on Monday. And then next Thursday will be the test. The first two chapters, those two chapters that we will have covered halfway, right? We cover four chapters in all, will constitute your midterm grade. The week after next is spring break, no classes. After spring break, midterm grades are due like uh, March 22nd or 23rd or something like that. And what I'll do is use, I think I've said this already, but I don't know if I said I count the homework in here too. You've got several things that count part of your grade. Web assigned homework is part of your grade. Okay? Web assigned will give me a number. Basically it's a percentage of the homework that you've completed. Okay. Then you've got two labs. Okay? You're I'll add those up and divide by two. You'll have a lab score. You'll have two hour exams. And you'll have nothing else, right? What else we got? Labs, homework, two hour exams. So that's four scores. Basically, I'll look at those four scores, add them up, divide by four. And that's your midterm grade. Now, one grade is really bad. You've got a bad um, test score or homework score or lab score. I will discount it. At the end of the semester, I will drop your lowest. Okay? But midterm, you have really got four grades to work with. So, yes? When is lab due? When is it due? Yeah. The, the first lab was due. Uh, no, no, I have the second one. The second one is due uh, next Friday at midnight. Oh, so on spring. Oh, no, so the day after the test. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Friday of the week, the test, Friday at midnight. Okay. Any, yeah. You're dropping the lowest test? Like at the end of the semester, you say you're dropping the lowest test or the lowest overall score? The lowest single score. It could be a lab score, it could be a homework score, it could be a test score, it could be half the final score. So whatever it is, I will drop that. Anybody else? <coughs> Any other questions? Yeah. You got it? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, So it's, you have those two functions, and the, the first part is to just uh, just revolve them regularly, which wasn't a big deal, but one, once it got to the revolve it around the y, line y equals 5, you know, to make a, a shell of it. Okay, let's take it off. A little off. 7, 2, number 7. 7, 2, you got y equals x squared. And y equals 4x minus x squared. Well, if you factor out an x, you get x. This is a parabola concave down. It has a 0 at 0 and a 0 at 4. And it's concave down. So it goes something like this. That's okay. So the area in question is right here. What problem is it? Number seven and seven two? Seven two, number seven. Oh. So, what we need to do, we need to find this point so it will become um, a limitative integration. And to do that, set the two equal to each other. Okay. 
So 2x squared is equal to 4x. Well, set it equal to 0. Factor out of 2x. These graphs intersect at 0, obviously, and at 2. Okay. That's the 2, 4. Oh, that's what you got up here. Okay. And we're going to revolve this around the line y equals 5. So we're going to take this area around that line. OK? So here we go. Let's take a rectangle with its delta x. What of those three shapes, what of those three objects do we get when we take this rectangle around the line y equals 5? We'll get a washer. What would you say? Yes. Whenever you have the perpendicular, um, whenever you have the rectangle perpendicular to the axis about which you're revolving, okay, here's the axis, y equals 5, here's the rectangle, you're going to either get a washer if there's a gap, and we do have a gap here, or you get a disk if there's no gap. If what you're t when you take the rectangle about the line and it's parallel to it, that's when you'll get a shell. So, we're going to have a washer. The volume is going to be pi, the integral, from 0 to 2, big R squared minus little r squared dx. Well, what's big R? Big R is this distance here. Little r is this distance here. Okay? So, What's big R equal to? Um, is it uh, x times 4 minus x? No. Squared. No. Nope. What is that distance right here from here to here? X squared. Five. X squared is this distance from here to here. That's x squared. Is it 5? Five? 5 is this distance from here is a constant. It's not a constant. It's going to change as we move along that graph. Yes, and that distance is? Five minus x squared. Yes, <laughs> five minus x squared. Good deal. Okay, it's five, this distance, minus the x squared distance. So it's five minus x squared, squared. Little r is this distance here. What is that equal to? Is that going to be five minus four x minus x squared? Yeah, jeez, what a pain this is. Wow. Holy moly, and that's that's what you got. Gee. And, and what? We have to do this out? Oh my goodness. It's, it's fine when we have to do them at home, but if we're doing them together. Yeah, there's a few you had to do. What's that? There's a few you really had to do it. Better wow. a couple like better like this in length. Yeah. <coughs> wow. Jeez. Okay, let's do it. Square that. Next to the fourth here. Minus. You gotta square that thing. I'm right, gonna keep it inside the parentheses here. That's squaring this. It's ten times the product, middle term, plus you gotta square this. Holy mackerel. No, this is ridiculous. This is just this is ridiculous. I don't know what Bozo was assigned this problem. Right. 0 to 2, 25 minus 10x squared plus x to the fourth minus, well, let's see what we got here. We got a 25 minus 40x plus 10x squared. We got a square of that. That's a 16x squared minus 8x cubed plus x to the fourth. K dx. 0 to 2. All right, let's drop the grouping symbols here. All right, let's. I want to do this in one step, but I don't. All right, I'm going to do it in two steps. Okay, 
10x squared, okay, minus 25 plus 40x minus 10x squared minus 16x squared plus 8x cubed minus x to the fourth. What a ridiculous problem, okay? But there is some light here. 25s cancel. X to the fourth cancel. Um, okay, so let's see. Been okay so far? Okay. Now we have pi 0 to 2. It seems to me we have an 8x cubed. And then on the x squares we have minus 10, minus 10, minus 20, minus 36 x squared. And then we have a 40x. I think that's it. Okay? Does that look reasonable? Check it out. The, the 36x squared is not 16x squared? Oh, I don't know. So I got minus 10, minus 10 is minus 20, minus another 16 is minus 36. Okay? And we could take a 4 out front, but I don't know, I'm just going to integrate it. 8x to the 4th over 4. 36x cubed over 3. 40x squared over 2. Okay. Put in a 2. 1632. 896, 80, zeros give us zero. It's a 112 minus 96 is 16. I'd go with 16 pi. And if that's not correct, I would then send an email to Burns and say, Burns, I got it right, give me credit, okay? And that's, that's what I would do if I were you. Uh, do you have it right now? Can you put it in there? Uh, no, I don't have a computer. Okay, good. I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any others? Wait, we all set on that? Carlos, we all set on that? Yeah, just uh, I got Oh, you verified it? And I got another one right already. <coughs> okay. All right. I don't know. It looks pretty good. Yeah, yes. Uh, so uh, do we have to go that far on the test, or we can step at some point? I would never give you that on a test in ten thousand years. <laughs> if I were to give you something like that on a test, I wouldn't even give you that just to set up the integral because I think the integral is a little bit nasty there. Um, if I give you something to do on the test, it's going to be a straightforward, easy one. I wouldn't give you one like that. Okay. Not many people are going to get this right, just because of the algebra involved. Okay, and I, I'm not going to. That's not the way my tests are. Yes. How many problems? Uh, word problems. Word problems. Well, you wouldn't consider this a word problem, would you? I would not. Uh, word problems. Well, like a spring one? Yeah, I give you spring. You're going to have a spring problem, for sure. I would give you a spring problem. And if you consider that a word problem, then the answer is yes. I would give you a problem where if you put a five pound weight on a spring and it stretches at two feet, I would give you that. You're also going to have a fluid force problem where you're going to take something, submerge it uh, with a vertical orientation and find the fluid force on that object. That would be, it's somewhat of a word problem. It's not really involved, though. It's really pretty straightforward. Okay, any other questions? Yes? I have a problem. You have a problem? We know that. Do you have any questions on the horn? I have a question. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead, Karen. <laughs> Right, it's uh, y equals 7 minus x about the x-axis. Wait, is there something else that I need to 7 minus x about the x-axis, and we're doing volumes, surface areas, or what? Shell, that's a volume question. Let's do it. Seems so easy, I don't know what I Well, okay, that's okay. We can do it. 7 minus x. Okay. 
We're ripping this thing around the x-axis. It's going to generate a cone. If the question is to find a volume, we could use the formula for a cone, one-third pi r squared h. We could do that, but we'll use the calculus. That's the, the spirit of the question, I'm sure. Okay. Okay. When we rip that rectangle around the x-axis, what does it generate? Discs, thank you. The volume is equal to pi, the integral, 0, 7. R squared, now R is this right here, the value of the function, okay, dx. Okay. It's not a shell method if you're going around the x-axis with that rectangle. If you want to take the rectangle parallel to the x-axis and use y's, then you would use shells. But with this rectangle perpendicular to that x-axis, it's a disk method. I guess I just mixed it up then, that's why. Okay. Okay. So you can do it out if you want, but it doesn't matter. Well, it's pretty simple to do because it's a u to the n form the way it is. I don't even have to multiply it out. u is 7 minus x. The d would be a negative 1. I'd multiply by negative and negative here. It's a u squared du. Okay. The integral of that is going to be u cubed over 3 from 0 to 7. So I get a negative pi over 3. Why is it negative? Because you gotta, if you let u equal 7 minus x, the d was a negative 1 dx. So I got to multiply by negative 1. And then I brought it out front. So I multiply by negative here and negative here. I multiply. The negative dx, when you take the integral, it's just going to go away? Yes, correct. Oh, that's, that is your du. So that's going to go away. Um, so now, substitute in 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. Minus, sub substitute in 0. You get 7 cubed over 3. Okay. Uh, I already got the 3, I'm sorry. So it's a negative 7 cubed, because we're subtracting it when you put in the 0. So it seems to me your final answer will be 7 q 343 pi over 3. Okay. That should be the answer. And if you were to do pi, oh, let's verify that. We can verify it. It's, it's a cone, and the volume is, like I said, 1 third pi <coughs> r squared h. When you whip this around the x-axis, you get this cone, and it's one-third pi r, the radius of the base, 7 squared, h7. You get 7 cubed, 343 pi over 3. Okay. All right, how are we doing? Any others? So when you have, um, because of what we know about u substitution, if you have expression in, inside parentheses and there's a negative symbol in there, it's, it has to come out front. Because sometimes I do these and wind up with a negative. Well, uh, it depends where the negative symbol is. If it's in front of a variable like it is here, yes. I mean, if it had been negative 7 plus x, then no. But I don't want to just say any, if, if you take u equal that quantity inside the parentheses, you find du, and this du is a negative 1 dx, so you need to get that negative 1 dx. Okay. Carolina, right, how you doing? Good. Okay. How are we doing? Okay. Ready to go on? Let us go on. I have the notes here. Okay, so. I'll grab class. What's that? I'll grab that class. Okay, let's go. All right, we have two topics to do. The first one, oh, this is you. Hmm? Sorry. All right, first one is to find the centroid of lamina that word is lamina I'm not sure how legible it is there of constant density ok 
Okay. Um, this is something in geometry that you may or may not have done. I can give you an example from geometry. If you have a triangle, The center, uh, this triangular region, a lamina, first of all, is a, an area in two space that has mass, okay? And you may say, Burns, it's impossible because if it's in two space, it has no depth at all. But what we're going to do is consider this <coughs> lamina a thin plate having some kind of density function so many pounds per square inch, or so many grams per square centimeter. Oh, Brendan's not here to contradict my units here. Oh, good. So then we have so many grams per square centimeter, whatever it happens to be. So think of these laminas as thin plates, okay, into space. They have a certain mass uh, because they have a density function. If you have a triangle with constant density, the centroid of that triangle is the point at which the triangle would balance at the head of a pin, okay? It's the point where you can consider all the mass of the triangle concentrated. If you were designing something, a platform, a triangular platform of constant density, and you had to support it with a beam, okay? That beam you would put right at the centroid of that triangle. It's where the triangle would balance on that beam. Okay? That's the centroid of that triangle. It's where it would balance. All right? Now, how do you find the centroid of a triangle? Do you know how to do that? Yes? Um, going from every angle, taking half the degree and making a line straight across and then finding the central position where they all... Yeah, that's basically it. It's pretty good, Sam. What you do is take the medians, okay, from here to the midpoint of the opposite side, The medians of any triangle are always concurrent. They always intersect at a single point. That point is its centroid. It's where the triangle would balance on the head of a pin. Well, we could do this one. We could actually do it without the calculus, and then we'll do it with the calculus. Because then with the calculus, we can do things other than triangles. Yes? Well, if it's three points intersecting at one point, then you only need two points. We only need two of these lines, yes. You're right, and that's all we're going to, let's do it. Let's take this one. Let's take these two medians. Let's find the equation of those two medians. What's the equation of this median right here? Uh, not 3 minus x, no. Y equals what now? What is it? 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3. No. Um, What's the equation of that line is what I'm asking. Negative. Negative. Uh, I haven't found the rest of it. Negative uh, x plus 3? Negative top x plus 3. Right? Yes, that's it. Thank you. Equation of the line. Slope, change in y, change in x. Change in y, 0 minus 3, change in x, 6 minus 0. You get negative 3, 6, negative 1 half, a x. And the intercept is 3. That's the equation of that median. Second median. Okay. Okay, we just did this one. What's the second median? What's the equation of this one? From here down to here. Negative one half x plus six. No. That would make it parallel to this. One third x plus six? No. No. Equation of the line. I'm not this is not this is algebra one. One. Algebra one. Equation of this line right here. Negative half x plus six. No. Two negative three x plus six. No. Six minus two x. All right, negative two x plus six. I'll take that. 
Slope of this line, change in y, 0 minus 6, change in x, 3 minus 0. Get negative 6 over 3, negative 2 is the slope. The intercept is 6. Those are my two medians, OK? I want to find out where they intersect. That will give me the centroid. And then we're going to do it with calculus, OK? So here we go. Uh, where do they intersect? Set the two equal. I don't know, multiply by 2. Uh, add 4x, subtract the 6, x is equal to 2, and if x is 2, y is equal to 2. We get the point 2, 2. It's a fact that in any triangle, the medians intersect at a point 2 thirds the distance from the vertex to the opposite side. So 2, 2 would be correct, okay? 2, 2 is 2 thirds of the distance. All right, that's. We can do that for triangles, but we can't do it for just about anything else. We can't. We need calculus to do it for irregular shapes, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to develop the calculus that will enable us to find the centroid of any lamina, okay, as long as we can integrate the functions, all right? All right, so in order to do that, however, we have to step back a ways, okay? We have to step back and talk about moments, okay? A moment, okay, is a mass times a distance. If you have a seesaw kind of thing, and you put some masses on this thing, oh, uh, whatever, okay, let's just go for a four pound uh, at negative five, and put another one, um, a two pound one at negative two. Okay. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just figure this out. An eleven pound one at three. Okay. This system will not be in equilibrium. Okay. We have the moments, if you take the moments to the left of this fulcrum, this point here, we've got a, a mass 4 times negative 5. The moment generated by this object is negative 20 foot-pounds. The moment generated by this one is a negative 4. We have a negative 24 foot-pounds on this side. And we have, oh, it's not going to come out. I knew it wouldn't come out right now, right, but that's all right. 33 foot-pounds on this side, okay? In other words, it's not going to be in equilibrium. There's more here. This thing will go down and that thing will go up, okay? Question is, how do you find where the center of mass should be in order for this thing to balance? Well, here's what you do. That center of mass, call it X bar, is equal to the sum of all the moments divided by the total mass. It's like the average, okay? It's a weighted average weighted by the mass. So you take a negative 20 plus a negative 4 plus a 33 divided by the sum of the masses. We have uh, 17. Okay, so we get negative 24 plus 33, negative 9 seventeenths. <laughs> okay, that's the way it goes, all right? I'm sorry, but that's just the way it goes. What does that mean? That means if I shifted this, if I shifted this, okay, uh, it's 9 seventeenths. Jeez, thank goodness. Thank you. I was going to say, I, it's, it's unbalanced in that direction, and yet I'm moving the center of mass that way. That doesn't make any sense. It's 9 seventeenths, okay? So if I shifted this 9 seventeenths this way, this would be my center of mass. And this system would be in equilibrium. It would balance. Let's verify that. You ready? So let's do it all over again. I'm going to move this center of mass 9 seventeenths over. So I'm going to find x bar now. Yes, go ahead. Does that imply that the 
Wait, say that again now. If you move the 11-pound weight towards the, the center, 9 Oh, oh, uh, no, because that wouldn't be enough. That would only be, I have to I have to shift this whole thing so each one of these would change. I, it's possible to figure out what you could do to do just the one. That's true. Yeah, by shifting the center, you're increasing the weights on the left yes. side and decreasing the Yeah, the other correct, way. correct. That's what I'm going to do, and that's what we're going to do. But you could do it your way, too. All right, so here's what we got. This would be, the moment generated here would be four pounds. Now, what would its distance be to our new, hopefully, center of mass? Uh, five plus nine, seven, or negative five minus nine, seven. Yeah, it would be negative five and uh, nine seventeenths. Oh, that's a stupid problem. Okay, that's okay. It's okay, we can do this. And what would this one be? This is my two pound weight. It would now be a negative two and nine seventeenths. And my 11 pound weight, now what would its, its distance be? It would be three minus the nine seventeenths. It would decrease. Okay. Why, are, why are we multiplying the other one but adding this? Well, because I'm moving it to the right. And by moving to right, this negative distance, in effect, increases. The distance from here to my new point is negative 5 plus another 9 seventeenths over. So that's what it would be. So yes, Sam? So you're multiplying them. What's that? You're multiplying them inside the parentheses. No, that's a, that's a mixed number. It's negative 5 and 9 seventeenths. Okay. It's not a multiplication. Okay. This is a subtraction because I was too lazy to do the subtraction in my head immediately. Okay. Here we go. So, what is this? Now I'm going to I have to multiply. So I get negative twenty, jeez, minus thirty six seventeenths, minus four, minus eighteen seventeenths, okay, plus thirty three, minus ninety nine seventeenths. Boy, if this comes out. I am, I am going to be very pleased, okay? So here we go. What should we get for an answer here as to how far away uh, our center of mass is from this new center of mass? What should we get for the sum of the moments here? We should get zero, okay? If we get zero, we, we've done it. We've moved it over, so now the system would be in equilibrium. We found the center of mass. So when you add all these up, it, it's zero. You can tell. Now let's do it. Should it be positive 18 17 Right here? No, because this is really uh, minus 2 minus 9 17 That's really what it is. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, so the, that's not, um, that, that one is 3 minus 9 17 It's not like. Yes, yeah, the others I put it as a mixed number. Why, in. why are we adding them? Adding what? Why isn't it negative 2 plus 9 17 because I would shorten the distance. I'm making it the distance longer. I, I'm taking this distance, which was negative 2, and I'm going 9 seventeenths this way. So what's my distance? It's a negative 2 and 9 seventeenths. I have to subtract it from the negative 2 to make that distance longer. Okay. You, we're going to add these up. If we don't get 0, then I'm going to pay attention to these questions, okay? Uh, so that is, that's, like on the first part, that's 5, negative 5 plus 9 seventeenths. This number right here, yeah. negative 5 and 9 seventeenths, is really this. Uh, That's really what it is. That's what that number is. Okay. That's really what it is. It's like negative 3 and a half. What's negative 3 and a half? It's negative 3 minus a half. That's really what it is. Okay. Because what's 3 and a half? And then you put the minus sign through. You've got to put it through both. You're going to have to trust me on these fractions, okay? I teach pre-algebra, and, and I know this stuff, okay? So here we go. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. This is, that's poor. Okay? That's negative 24 plus 33. It's 9. Oh, good. <laughs> you get negative 36 minus 18. That's a 54. Minus 99, so I get a, a negative 54 minus 99. It's a negative 153 over 7. 
team, and 17 goes in there how many times? Nine times. 9.25. No. No, I can see it. It comes out of nine exact. Oh, I misread <sighs> Okay. There we go. We have it. So we move the center of mass over to center it over, so now it's in balance. That's what you do. Okay, but here's what we're going to do now. We're going to crank it up. Instead of this finite system of these individual weights at these certain distances, let's take a continuous system like the following. You ready? Everybody okay with this? All right, hopefully everybody's okay. Here's what we're going to do now. Watch this. This is going to be stunning. Let's take two functions. Let's take an f of x. And let's take a g of x. And let's say they intersect at A and B. And what we want to do is give this lamina a constant density. Density functions are always given by rho, okay? Greek letter, rho, okay? We've got a constant density function, rho. We want to find the centroid of this lamina of constant density, okay? We need two things. We need the sum of all the moments, and we need the mass. Let's do the mass first, okay? Let's find the mass of this object, okay? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's draw a rectangle in here. No, I'm going to do this in general, and then we'll do it for the triangles, and then we'll do it for two other functions, okay? And then we'll do the fluid force stuff, okay? So, we want to find the mass. Now, you can make this argument, and I, I wouldn't, matter of fact, I'm thinking about making this argument right now, except it, it's nicer to do it in a more general argument. How can you find the mass of this lambda of constant density? What could you do? What would you do to find this mass? Find the, find the area and multiply by? The, the mass of the same units? Not the, yeah, you, I'm sorry, density. Yeah, you find the, den, uh, multiply by density. The mass of this object is the area bounded by the two, and we know how to do that, top minus bottom, times the density function. I mean, that's the mass. Okay. But what I really, what I want to do is general, is, is develop it as a Riemann sum. Because from there, I want to get the moments, okay, in the same manner. So here we go. I want to get the mass in a slightly different way. Let's find one mass, the mass of this one rectangular region. Its mass is going to be equal to its area, which is this length, times its width, times its density function. That's the mass of that one rectangular region. The mass of my lamina will be the sum of all these masses. The exact mass of this lamina will be the limit as n goes to infinity. Okay? Anybody with me on that? Nice. What kind of sum do I have right here? a Riemann sum. And we do that with an integral. I can take the density out front, it's a constant. Okay. 
That's exactly what we have, okay? All right, that's the mass of this object. The other thing we need is the sum of all the moments, okay? Okay, so let's take a moment. We have two moments, a moment from the x-axis, okay, and a moment from the y-axis. Let's do the x-axis first. Call it m sub x. That's the moment from the x-axis. Now, I'm going to take the midpoint of this rectangle, okay? This moment generated by this rectangle is equal to a mass times a distance. And the distance I'm going to use is the distance to the midpoint of the rectangle. So this ith moment from the x-axis is approximately <coughs> equal to the mass, we have it right here, times the distance. Now here's the thing. What's the distance to this midpoint of this rectangle that's between these two functions? What are the coordinates? What is the y-coordinate, that's the one we're interested in, of that rectangle between the two, and I want the midpoint of that rectangle? Is so it g of x minus f of x over 2? No. Shoot. G of x minus f of x will give you this distance right here. Over 2 will give you that distance, but that is not this distance. Okay? It was close. Yes? So G, <coughs> G of x minus G f of, f of x minus G of x over 2? That's what he said. Uh, I mean, and but with the, the, the did you first plus what you said? Oh, wait. Okay, so give me the whole thing that you said. <laughs> g of x plus f of x minus g of x over 2. G of x plus that. Would it be? Why g? Why? 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 Wait, wait, wait. Let me think. You said g of x no. plus. You, geez, you're right there. You're really close. Well, that's where the point would be, wouldn't it? Well, the point's in the middle. You have me taking G of, oh, G of X, the bottom one. This is my bad, Karen. I'm looking at this and looking at and seeing G of X at the top. So here's what Karen is saying. She's saying this point is equal to the bottom guy here, G of X, plus the difference here, which is what Dylan said, which is F of X minus f of x minus g of x over 2. I will accept that. Could you? But okay. You have to do, uh, but you don't have to do that. There is a better way, of course. f of x minus g of x over 2 minus f of x. Like uh, you could probably do it that way, but geez, uh, there's, a, there's a better way than all these things. Actually, this is going to simplify to the better way. You'll see it in a second. You ready? Here we go. Let's, let's combine these into 1. Let's multiply by 2 over 2. And what do I end up with when I add these together? 2g of x is plus f of x minus g of x. Well, 2g of x minus g of x is g of x, all over 2. What do we end up with? f of x plus g of x over 2. That's the point midway between these two functions. It's their average. You add them up and divide by 2. That couldn't be more simple. <laughs> But, but, but what these guys were thinking works. Okay, they were thinking, okay, start at the bottom and add half the distance. That's reasonable. But it does simplify to f of x plus g of x over 2. That's how you find the midpoint between two other points. Add them up and divide by 2. So exactly the same first time. What? So the first time. Uh, you never said this. Okay. Uh, so anyhow, I'm not sure what you said the first time. But it seemed to me you were giving me this just little distance here, half the distance. And then she added it to the bottom one, which gave me the point. Right, but whatever. Okay, so here we go. You ready? Okay. The moment from the x-axis is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of all these moments from the x-axis. Okay?
These are x sub i's here. It doesn't really matter. Okay. You with me on that? What kind of sum do we have? A Riemann sum. The moment from the x-axis is equal to the integral rho a to b f of x minus g of x times f of x plus g of x divided by 2. So I can take the 2 out front, dx. That is the moment that this object generates from the x-axis. That moment is a tendency to revolve or rotate about the x-axis. Okay. Yes? Multiply these two guys? Yes. All right, next thing. Yes? Is what this is doing, is what it's doing taking, taking them, what, it, is it, what, what we're going to do is it going to take, because this will, once you go to the edges, you'll find the endpoints. That's the first thing, that's one of the things it'll do, and then it'll take, find the middle of the endpoints. Well, at the endpoints, this, uh, this thing will be either endpoint. And then as you move away from it, it'll, give, it'll keep being in the center between the two. Right. That's but what it does. But the point that we're looking for is going to be the middle? Yes. 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 That's what we got. Let's find them. Yes? What's the, like, delta x at the end of the sum? Like, where is that coming from? That comes from the width of this rectangle in order to get the area of the rectangle, in order to get the mass of the rectangle. Well, it is in here. It's this. Yeah, really, that's what happens to it. That Riemann sum with a delta x becomes the integral with a dx. Okay? All right, I need the moment from the y-axis. That's this distance right here. So this is only the x-axis? That's the x-axis only. All right, here we go. I'm going to squeeze it in here. The moment from the y-axis, but I'm going right for the integral now, guys. Here we go. Moment from the y-axis is a mass times a distance. What is that distance from the y-axis equal to? <laughs> I thought you said it, Mohit. You thought it, though, didn't you? Did you think it? Yes, he did. Do you want to say it? No. Shoot. I misread your mind. Take it easy. What's that distance from the y-axis? It's uh, one specific thing. The distance from the y-axis is x. x. Yes. That's what an x-coordinate is. Okay. So, here we go. The moment from the y-axis is going to be our density function. The integral from a to b, f of x, minus g of x times x dx. That's it. Okay. So are you ready for this? Here we go. To find the centroid of a lamina, a constant density, the formula we need is this. I'm taking this away. Levi, you all righty? You all right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're all pretty close. Okay, the centroid is denoted x bar, y bar. Okay, that's uh, from statistics. X bar and y bar are always the mean, the average. And that's what you got here with the centroid, an average. It's really the average moment is equal to the moment from the y-axis divided by the mass, moment from the x-axis divided by the mass. Okay? Okay. Now, will you, are you going to have to know this? 
Yes. Are you going to have to know how to get m sub y and m sub x? Yes. And the mass. Yes. Go ahead. What happens if you have more than two functions? Whoa. If you have more than two, well, how many laminas do you have? It depends. This will find the, um, the centroid of a lamina of region. If you've got three functions, you'll have probably two or three different laminas. You could find the moment, the center of mass of each, the centroid of each, and actually take the average, but you'd have to weight it by the mass. Well, uh, so let's say you have the same function we had before, yeah. and then you, have, then you add uh, x as a function, and then you use it, and then that changes where a and b are. Yeah, that would change things around. It depends on what you wanted to do. That's my best answer. You ready to do one? What's that? Go ahead. Um, so when they give you the problem, they give you the two functions and then the constant density. Yeah, that's always understood. Oh, okay. And then you find the two moments, one for x, one for y, and you divide each by the mass of the whole thing. That is correct. I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Watch this. Let's do the triangle. Okay, you ready? We already know what the triangle is. Let's verify our formulas by doing the triangle. We'll do that. And then we'll do one for which there is no formula. Uh, it must be done with calculus. There is a book, however, a uh, civil engineering book that will give centro <coughs> centroids and laminas of various, <coughs> bless you, of various shapes, okay, and two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes. It's kind of interesting, but it can't give you everything. Some things you have to do with calculus. So if you're an architect, it's the architect uh, that really has to know more about these kinds of things uh, than engineers would actually, although engineers should know them as well. Okay, uh, let's do it. Let's do our uh, triangle. Okay. Uh, the equation of this function here, why, what would the equation of that line be? I hesitate to ask, but I will ask being the brave soul that I am. What's that? Six minus X. Thank you. Six minus X. Opposite of X plus six. We'll put it in that form, but six minus X is fine. Okay. That's the equi That's our function. Okay. Let's find the mass of this first. Mass is equal to constant density, the integral. We're going to go from zero to six top function, which is this, minus the bottom function, which is zero. Okay. Bottom function is zero. Top function is this. That's our mass. This is the formula we have for mass. Okay. Right here. Our mass formula. That's what I'm using right now. Okay. So the mass of this object is rho opposite of x squared over 2 plus 6x from 0 to 6, rho, 6 squared, 36, okay, 18, plus 36, zeros give us 0, we get 18 rho. How else could we have done that? We could have found the area of the triangle, 1 half base times height, 1 half 6 times 6, 18 times the density, okay? Yes, yeah, it's rho. Rho is always used for density function. R O W. R R no R H W. It's a Greek letter Rho. Yeah, like What's that? It's like yeah, it does, but it's Rho. What's the it's Greek. It's Greek. Yes, it's Greek. It's Greek letter. Rho. You've never seen Rho? Why are you so amused by this? I'm just messing with you. Oh, that's okay. I don't mind that. <laughs> okay. All right. That is the mass of that object. Next, let's find the moment from the x-axis. Moment from the x-axis is rho times the integral from 0 to 6. The difference in the two functions. Okay. Here's what I'm using. I'm using the moment from the x-axis that we developed, this formula we derived, 
right here. Okay, this is what I'm going to use right here. That's the moment from the x-axis. It's rho over 2, the difference of the functions, times the sum. Okay? So, rho over 2, difference in the two functions, minus 0, and the sum. The bottom function here is 0. Okay? The next example won't be 0 anymore. We'll do something else. We'll make it more complicated, more challenging. So the moment from the x-axis is equal to rho over 2, the integral from 0 to 6, x squared, minus 12x, plus 36. Yeah, you know what, Dylan, that's a very, uh, very nice suggestion. And if I had seen that a second ago, I would have done it that way. But I didn't. So I'm doing it this way. But you are totally correct. What Dylan is saying, correctly so, that uh, this is the opposite of x plus 6 squared. I could have done it as a u to the n form and saved us some time. But I didn't. So now this is going to take us longer. We're all going to be late to wherever we're going after this because of me. And I, I'm sorry. All right, but that's what's going to happen. Shoot. All right, so we got rho over 2, integrate it, x cubed over 3, 12x squared over 2, 36x, 0 to 6. We got rho over 2. 6 q 216 over 3, 72, minus 6 squared times 6, 36 times 6, 216, plus 36 times 6, 216. Wow, pretty cool. We end up with 36 rho. That's the moment this object generates around the x-axis. Let's do y. Okay. We're going to use the formula we developed for the moment from the y-axis. Check it out. Here it is. Okay. We developed that. We derived it. We did that. Okay. Rho times the difference in the functions times x. Okay. So, rho, 0 to 6. The difference in the functions times x. We've got rho, 0 to 6, opposite of x squared plus 6x. Integrate it. Opposite of x cubed over 3, 6x squared over 2, from 0 to 6. We get 6 cubed, it's 216 over 3, 72, plus 6 squared is 36 times 3, 108, zeros give us 0, that's 36 rho. Okay. X bar, Y bar, our centroid. Still on there? Yes, I am. <coughs> is equal to moment from the y axis over the mass, moment from the x axis over the mass, moment from the y axis, 36 rho over the mass, 18 rho, moment from the x axis, 36 rho over the mass. Rows cancel, 36 over 18 is 2. We get the point 2, 2, which is exactly what we got when we did it by intersecting the two medians. 2, 2. So it comes out perfect. It's at that point that that triangle would balance on the head of a pin. Okay? Whew. How are we doing out there? 
one. I'm working like a dog. I don't know about you guys. I'm going to give you one to do, though. You ready? Leave you guys with a real doozy. I'll take five. See you later. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think I should do. I'll go and go to a YouTube and watch Magnus Carlson play or something. What are you doing? You're going to take it off. You need paper? No, if you're going to take off that piece of paper, let me see. Would, you want to take this paper? Yeah, it's going to take it. Anybody else need it? Anybody else need to see it? Oh, wait. Some people are still copying it. Okay. How are we doing? We're doing okay? Doing okay? Doing okay? 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 Alright. Okay? Alright. Here we go. All right, I'm going to give you a problem to do. I want you to find the central of the following lamina of constant density. Let's take y equals x squared and y equals x. Go ahead. Got it? Wow, that was yeah, lightning yeah. fast. Which function should we consider f x and which one should we consider g of x? Put it in the top It doesn't matter. Top minus bottom. Top is x, bottom is x squared. The way I've got it in my diagram there, f of x is the top. So f of x would be the x. g of x would be the uh, x squared. Wait, before you do it, can someone give me an estimate as to what the uh, answer should be around? Just by looking at this, give me a basic <coughs> ballpark figure as to what the answer should be. Around one half, one half, but a little bit lower and perhaps even to the right a little bit, maybe, because of the way that x squared is. But a little bit lower than one half, one half is a good shot. Okay, just so you know. Okay. So if you get something that's very different, then you, you made a mistake. Oh. Yes. Say that again. The point here is one one. One one.
Who wants more time? Okay, okay. Yes. Thank you. 
doesn't look good now because this, this thing doesn't look right. Uh, when you do this divided by that, this divided by that, you can get by that from 6 out of I don't think that looks right. This one looks good. I'm going to do it out. I'm going to take this too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Don't sweat. Okay. Um, so, who has an answer? He or she is pretty confident. Dylan. Um, I got for the X component. Uh, I got two row over five and Y as row over two. The row should cancel out. You should not have rows in your answer. Uh, I thought they were supposed to carry So then uh, X is two over five and the other one is Y component is one half. Two fifths, one half. Two fifths comes, com comes back this way and one half. That's what I got. That's what you got? That's what you got? Oh, that sounds pretty good. I mean, if that's what you guys all got. So you have, okay, here's one half, one half. But you guys have two fifths this way. And then, and one half. This point is one half. That can't be right. Yeah, I had six over All right, so, see, here, just, just take a look at what I'm thinking here. If you're going to get two fifths, one half, you're going to start at one half, one half, and go to the left and stay parallel to that. You're going to be outside this lamina. And I, let me tell you something. When you have laminas, and they're convex, meaning given any two points, draw a line, that line stays in the lamina. Okay? That centroid is going to be inside the lamina. It won't be outside the lamina. Yours is outside the lamina. That can't be it. Hey. Uh, Three-fourths, one-fourths, one-half. Three-fourths. Also staying at one half. That I don't like it, but it may or may not be true. I can't, I know I know his is wrong. I don't know <laughs> that that's wrong, but I suspect it's wrong. Okay. Yes. Four fifths, one half. So you're going. Why you going over there? Uh, I don't like that one either. Right? But listen, all I'm saying is it doesn't seem right to me. Yes. One half, two fifths. One half, okay, stays there, uh, and then two fifths, which drops it down right underneath. Now that's that's possible. That's possible. That's possible. Yes. Say that again. I want X bar and Y bar. I want X bar and Y bar. So I picked that one. So my X bar was P over 15, and my Y bar was P over 12. Same thing. Can't be right. Because you can't, first of all, you can't have rows. And, and a row over 15, if you eliminate the rows, you get 115. There's no way it's going to be 115. Okay? So that can't be right. Anybody else? I'm just, just get on right. That's 6 over 15. Yeah, 6 15 would simplify to 2 fifths. fifths. And then what's the oh, other one? Uh, one half. 2 fifths, 1 half. Same thing. That's it. Yeah. I don't like it. No. Okay. Yeah, right. Can we go home? Uh, I'm arguing that I think that's the correct answer. Yeah, which yeah. I think that's the correct answer. If we're right about well, that, we're fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? I'm talking about the coordinate, right? So I'm talking about the centroid of this lamina. I got 6 over 15, 1 half. 6 we over 15, we three, two one fifths, two. 1 half. That's, right? that's, yes. that's what you guys are getting. Yes, I think that's right. Oh, that's Is it, it. Like uh, your, did I write it wrong, or are you actually supposed to switch them? So it's like X, Y, but then to then find you it, them. you flip off. It's M sub Y over uh, mass, M sub X over mass. Okay. Okay. Because M sub Y, think about what's M sub Y. The moment from the Y axis is an X coordinate. That's your X coordinate. M sub Y is an X coordinate. So everyone got. Um, Wait, you guys do right? M sub yeah. Y, right? Yeah. 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 I, I don't think that's it. All right, let's take a look. But it's, it's where the I don't like that in answer, though. That your f of x is just x, and your g of x is x squared. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's just figure it out. 
Oh, did you guys? Maybe you did the top minus bottom one or something. All right, let's do the mass first. Maybe you didn't do either. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, that has happened. Okay, 92, 93, something right around there somewhere. Okay, so anyhow, the mass is equal to rho, the integral, 0 to 1, okay. top minus bottom. Okay. So rho x squared over 2, x cubed over 3, 0 to 1, rho 1 half minus 1 third, that's rho over 6. Okay. Would you agree with that mass, Sam? Yeah, yeah. and I was just redoing what everyone was talking about. It was six fifteenths and one half. See, that's what they're all getting. Of course, they're not even simplified. I mean, how can I accept that answer? It's not even a simplified fraction. You know what I mean? But anyhow, that's what they're saying. Yes? It doesn't matter what order it goes on, right? That's what most of What the m is, which is the event. Well, yeah, you're going to get a, a negative number if you do it the other wrong way. But if you do it the other way, they're all negative. Well, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I don't recommend that by any. But yeah, that's true. Don't, don't do it that way, though. I mean, do it the right way. Okay. All right. Uh, I got something different. Go ahead. Uh, I got six fifths one half. Six fifths. Not six fifteenths. One half. Yep. Cannot be. Okay. okay. Six fifths is out here somewhere. It's past the one, so it's too far away. All right, let's do it. Well, let's see. Maybe, maybe I'm not thinking about this right. Um, all right, well, anyhow. Whatever. Well, let's, let's take a look. Moment from the uh, y axis. Okay? Moment from the y axis oh. is rho. I got what they got. Okay. Uh, Integral 0 to 1. Difference in the functions times x dx. This is the moment from the y-axis. Rho, integral, 0 to 1. x squared minus x cubed. Rho, x cubed over 3. x to the fourth over 4. 0 to 1. I end up with rho, 1 third minus 1 fourth. That's 1 twelfth. That's rho over 12. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that is. No, wait a minute. That's the x coordinate is one half, not negative, yeah, not two fifths. M sub y. This is what Abby was saying. Just what is x bar y bar? It's m sub y over the mass. Oh. M sub x over the mass. I said that. So those are backwards. They're not backwards. It's what they are. What are you talking about? Why, why, why is it backwards? Look, look at the way you're acting. This is it. That's it. Okay, yeah, yeah, but I went back and looked at that. It assumed I wrote it down wrong. Yeah, What's that? I thought I wrote it down wrong. I thought the y component was y. That's right. Well, that's the whole thing. Look at it. Look at it. Think about it. A moment from yeah. the y axis. Yeah, but the only examples you gave us before were the same values. Yeah, so but we've never been able to tell the difference. Okay, then all we do is flip it and you get. Then I agree with it. And that's what Molly had added. He's the only one I think that happened. But anyhow, you got a y axis here and you got an x axis here. Moment from the y axis is this distance from the y axis times a mass. That's what a moment is mass times distance. But what is this distance from the y axis? It's x, it's an x coordinate. The x coordinate of your centroid is m sub y over the mass. I, I wrote it that way. Oh, you guys just assumed I made a mistake and rewrote it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so, okay, so that explains it. Okay, so there we go. So, moment from the x axis is rho over 2, integral 0 to 1. Difference in the functions times the sum. Okay? So, rho over 2, integral 0 to 1. x squared minus x to the fourth. Okay. That's equal to rho over 2. Integrate the thing. x cubed over 3. x to the fifth over 5. 0 to 1. Rho over 2. One third minus one fifth 
that's two fifteenths and uh, that's five minus three, two fifteenths, the twos cancel. You get right over 15. Okay, so here we go. That centroid of this lamina of constant density is equal to the moment from the y-axis over the mass, moment from the x-axis over the mass is equal to rho over 12 over the mass, rho over 6, moment from the x-axis, rho over 15, rho over 6. Rho's cancel. This is 6 twelfths. That's 1 half. 6 fifteenths divided by 3, 2 fifths. Now that makes sense. 1 half, 2 fifths, just underneath that midpoint. Not to the left of it, which is what you guys have, which brings us outside the lamina, which can't be true, but underneath that midpoint, which is in the lamina. Hiya. Okay, now, now we're all set. So, we got one more thing to do. Wait, what are you doing? What's that? It was all. Okay. We have one more thing to do. I'm sorry. We have one more thing. We have fluid pressure, fl fluid force. Here we go. Let's take. All right. Here we go. Let's take this table right here. Let's assume that that is the surface of water. Okay. This table is submerged underwater. Let's suppose it's six feet underwater. Let's further suppose that the dimension, let's say this is two feet by ten, uh, five feet. This is a two foot by five foot table. Let's also suppose that the density of water, okay, is a little rounded up to 60 uh, pounds per cubic foot, okay? It's a little bit greater than that, but that's about right, okay? You with me? 60, 60 pounds per cubic foot. How much force is on this table? Well, the force of the water on this table is equal to the area of the table, 2 by 5. The force is equal to the area of the table, 2 feet by 5 feet, okay, times the depth, 6 feet, The depth. This is fluid forces. Fluid force. Times the density of water, and we were going with an even 60 uh, pounds per cubic foot. That would be the force on that table. It would be equal to uh, 10, uh, 60, 3,600 pounds. And the units, you notice the units nicely cancel out and we're left with pounds. That would be the force on that table. 3,600 pounds of force on that table. Okay? Now that's pretty simple. What happened? Yes? 60 uh, pounds per cubic foot density of water. Approximately. It's really 62.4. And salt water would be a little bit denser. And that's what we're going to do. Our problem here is this. You're going to be working for sea world. Yeah. No, I'll see whales. <laughs> they're still around. And they need engineers, and they're going to build um, um, killer whale friendly tanks. I don't know. That's an oxymoron, I think. I don't think like that's a portrait enclosure for them. Yes. A whale tormenting pen? <laughs> they're not. They're, they're pretty bad. No, they're, they're very bad. bad. That movie killed me. That movie just killed Good. me. Are you uh, really? You're right. Black sails? No. no. Black sails. Black fin. Black. Hey, Steve-O's doing his part, too. It's black Who is? Steve-O from Jackass? I don't even know that. What is Oh, it? it's just like, all right, it's a crazy movie. These guys just hurt themselves for fun. But they do what for fun? They hurt themselves and film it. But, like, this guy has this, like, a huge following. But, like, he's just, like, gone to jail multiple times recently. Just I mean, really? In real life? Yeah, just for promoting, like, the, like, the message of just, like, like, get these whales out of here. Like, really? Yeah, he's... Keeps like doing crazy things wow. to get attention for it. Um, anyhow, what was the movie? The movie was um, Black Fin. 
Black Finn. Yeah, I guess that was him. Okay. So anyhow, yeah, I really killed him, uh, which is good. I, I, okay, but anyhow, so you, you're an engineer. You're looking for a job. They, they hire you, and, and your job is they got one tank over here of water, and they got another tank here of, of water, and what they're going to build is a door, okay, that goes from one tank to the other at a certain depth. Now, the door is not going to have a horizontal orientation. It'll have a vertical orientation. And what you have to do is determine what material that door has to be made of to withstand the fluid force of the salt water on the door. Okay? That's what you're going to have to do. What about the orca force? About the what? The orca force. What force? The orca force. Oh, when, <laughs> when they bump into it and try to break through it? I don't know. That, and we're not going to take that into account. These are happy. These are happy folks. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are happy. Their fins are not like this. So fins are like, so like, so like this. Keep your face with a smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it. Anyhow. Uh, so the problem changes though when you take the table here. Let's start with the table and give it a vertical orientation. Okay. When we give it a vertical orientation, what happens is the force is different on each piece of the table. As you go down the depth, the force increases. So it's not a constant depth where you have a constant force. The depth changes, and we have a, a, a calculus problem is what we have. Okay. Although that, for the rectangle, is not all that bad because we could take it and rotate it right around the center and give it a horizontal. But let's, let's see. Here's the problem. The problem is, well, I'll tell you what. Let's do the door problem. It's a triangular door. Well, well I'm going to make it a triangular door. Okay. And let's say it's, here's the problem. Oh boy, I'm certainly losing it here. We got a triangular door, like so. Why is it triangular? I don't know, to accommodate the fin, I guess, or something. Okay. And let's suppose this is at a distance of 12 feet. And this is at a distance of 18 feet. And this point here is going to be the point oh, 418, negative 18. This is negative 12, negative 18, negative 18. I'm sorry. And this would be negative 4, negative 18. So is this door at the bottom of the Here's the top of the water. Okay, it's in the water. Okay, at the bottom of the tank. It's so the triangle. It's a triangle. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the so sometimes we have it closed when we want to keep the two uh, the orcas apart. But sometimes we'll open it when we'll let them be together. Okay. For whatever reason. Okay. So we want to find what material we're going to make uh, what we're going to make the door of. So. What they want to do at SeaWorld is make the cheapest possible door that we can that will stand the fluid force of that seawater. Okay, that's what we want. That's what you're hired to do. Okay, find the cheapest door we can get. Yeah, let's get some kids to build it. Yes. Like five, like really young. <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards, let's Are you a fish lover or something? Yeah. I am too. Mm -hmm. Well, I am too. All right, but anyhow. So, we want to find the fluid force on this door. Well, how are we going to do this? Let's see. Tell you what, let's take this triangle over here because we have symmetry. Obviously, the force on this triangle is the same as the force on that triangle. So, I'm going to take that triangle and double that force, okay? Now, what's the force here? What I'm going to do is take a, a rectangle, okay? A delta Y. What I'm going to do is find the force on that uh, that rectangle right here. Okay. Then I'm going to sum up all the forces on all these little rectangles. And then I'm going to do what? What am I going to do then? After I find that approximation for the force on that one rectangle, double it to get the fluid force on that rectangle, then what are we going to do? We're going to add them all together, true. And we're going to, then what? Take a Riemann, we're going to let n go to infinity, so the delta y's will go to zero, and we'll get a Riemann sum, and we'll be able to evaluate it with an inch. That's what we're heading for. Go ahead. Doesn't the amount of water in the tank matter? Yeah, we have to have water in the tank. The water goes up to the top. Yeah, we'll die without water. 
But no, no, no. Uh, when the water, like with dams. What? With dams. The more water behind the dam, the more pressure is being applied to the dam. It all depends on the depth. The water is equally pushed in all directions depending on the depth. Okay. That's what it is. The depth is, is all that matters. It's a hydraulic kind of a thing in a fluid. Right. That's what it is. I, I don't think it matters in a dam how much water is behind it this way. It's the depth of the dam, I th uh, of the water. I think that's all that matters. That's all that's going to matter to us. Okay. Okay. Yeah, your issue with dams is how much water is at the top to the force it's exerting at the bottom. Yeah, well, that's, that's the depth, and that's what we need. Because the water uh, pushes out in all directions equally. Okay. All right, so, okay, so how much force is on this one rectangle? This force, this piece of force, is approximately equal to. Well, let's see. It's equal to the length of this rectangle. I'm going to call that L of Y. It's some function of Y. Okay. Okay, that'll be this length. It's times a delta Y, which would be this thickness here, or this width of this rectangle. This product will give me the area of the rectangle. Now, how much force is on that rectangle? Well, it depends on the depth. And that's going to be a name. Well, what's going on? Everybody's, people are leaving? They don't like this problem? All right, whatever. Okay. Now, if this is a negative value, a negative y coordinate, the depth is the opposite of y. We need a positive number there. Okay. When that was six feet under the surface, we needed a six, not a negative six. Okay. So we got a negative y. Can you reorient the axis on there? You don't want to. It's always the case the x-axis is the top of the water. That's always the case. Yes. So is that um, within the parentheses of y sub i? In parentheses is y sub i, yes. Yeah, it's the ith y. Y sub i. The delta y's are going to be the same. Uh, this would be a y sub i as well. And the other thing we need is a density function. We use rho again for density. Salt water, 64 pounds per cubic foot. So, the, so that L y i, so that's actually delta x? No, that's this length. That's not a delta x. That's a length there. Okay, you ready? The force. Sum up all these forces, okay, is approximately the sum of all these. I'm going to multiply by 2 since I've done one triangle, I need to. L of y, opposite of y, rho, delta y. The exact force on this triangular <coughs> door is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of two times the sum of all these forces. And what kind of a sum do I have? I have a Riemann sum. And that force then is equal to, in this case, two times the integral. Now, what we're going to do is go from bottom to top. All right, in general here, let me write it. I already put a 2 here, which destroys that. But OK, well, and this time it's 2 times the length in terms of y times a negative y times a density we can take out front dy. This is a general form for fluid force on an object submerged in any medium. It doesn't matter, as long as you know the density of that medium. I got a 2 here in this case because I'm doubling it. Okay? So let's do it. What's the force on this door? Force is equal to 2. Uh, let's say it's in salt water, so the density here is 64 pounds per cubic foot. When you integrate, go from bottom to top, negative 18 to negative 12. Now, I need this length here in terms of y. It's got to be a function of y because our, our rectangle here is a delta y. 
I'm going to call this L of Y still because we're going to have to solve for it. Okay. Negative Y is our depth, dy. What I need is this distance right here in terms of Y. Well, the distance from the Y axis we know is X. I need it in terms of Y. Here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to take this X value and get it in terms of Y. And how am I going to do that? This is X, but I need it in terms of Y. So how am I going to get that X in terms of Y? Say that again. You're going to have to say it louder. What? No, that's not going to be that simple. Logarithmic? What's that? No. I want this distance here in terms of X. I have all these various things. I need a relationship between y and x for this. This is x right here. You do the integral. Uh, I can't do the integral until I get this in terms of y. But the integral is not going to allow me to get x in terms of y. Take the axis. The axis is here, but do what with it? Could we take the uh, the thingy that we did earlier? The uh, thingy we did earlier. The moment. Uh, <laughs> what? The moment. No, 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 nothing to do with moments. Oh, you don't know the angle. Could, if you knew the angle at the top of that door, you could use trig to figure it out. Uh, we don't want to use trig. You, it's possible to use trig here, though. It would be possible. Oh, uh, if, yeah, you do. Because if, if that line is perpendicular, you go, oh, no, you don't know to the bottom, because you would know that it's 6 from 12 to 18. Yeah. But you don't know the length where, y, where delta y is at the bottom. Because otherwise, you can figure this it out. This here? Yeah, I know that's 4. No, no, I'm saying if, if we had that point, you know, eight zero eighteen, and that rectangle was at the bottom of it, you could just use, you know, uh, uh, Pythagorean identities to figure it out. Right. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to use the equation of this line. Okay. We can find the equation of that line. That'll give me y in terms of x. And then I can find out what x is uh, and find out what y is. Okay. So let's find the equation of that line. Okay, the equation of this line is y equals, you guys have a little problem with the equations of lines, but that's all right. Change in y, okay, I'm, I'm finding the slope. Start and the change in y is negative 18 minus negative 12. That's negative 6. 4 minus 0. Four. That's the slope of that line. And the intercept is minus 12. So I get y equals negative 3 halves x minus 12. This length here is x, but I need it in terms of y. So what I have to do is take this and solve for x. Okay? Add 12. Multiply by a negative 2 thirds. That's what x is. Okay? Okay, you with me? This distance y right here, this length in terms of y, which is x, the distance from the y-axis, is this. My force is 128. The integral from negative 18 to negative 12. L of y, which is negative 2 thirds y minus 8 times a negative y dy. Believe it or not, that integral will give me the exact fluid force on that triangular door at the bottom of our Orca torture pits. Go ahead. Yeah, well, salt water, it'll be given. It'll be given. Okay, so this is a pain in the neck, this problem, though. I can see that. I didn't think of it. I'll give you that. I'll give it to you for free. Okay. Free of charge. 128, negative 18, negative 12. Okay, multiply it through. So we get 2 thirds y squared plus 8y dy. Reef. Okay. Wait, this is Go ahead. Oh, you didn't just, oh, okay, I'm sorry. It's all right. 
Uh, I'm going to need some help on these numbers, I think. I, I shouldn't have, I, we should have made a smaller tank. What the heck they need all that water for? We should have made it uh, small. Okay. Turns out what, do you, what do you think the, the biggest Tupperware container is? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the heck? Is that before or after you chop them for a little bit? <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, 128. Negative 18 to negative 12. Let's integrate this. Oh, I have my mind. So we got two thirds y cubed plus a y. I'm just repeating myself here. Okay, let's do the integral. Uh, two thirds y cubed over three. Eight y squared over two. Negative 18 to negative 12. Oh, for Pete's sake. Wait. Yeah, go ahead. I integrated it y cubed over 3. Oh, that's a 9. I said two nines, I think. Good call. Thank you. Okay, good call. That kind of mistake will cost you your job at SeaWorld. Okay. <laughs> so, 128 substitute in negative 12. I'm definitely going to need help on this. Negative 12 cubed plus 4 times negative 12 squared minus 2 ninths negative 18 cubed okay, minus 4 times negative 18 squared. I need someone to crank that out for me. Okay. I have no idea what the answer is. Kind of like do you want the fractional bar? Oh, yeah, sure. What do you got? Negative 10. No, not negative. Can't be negative. Something's wrong. <laughs> if there's negative, there's a mistake. And if there's a mistake, I didn't make it. So. I'm going to Wait, Carlos, what do you have? 520? Yeah. Just like this? Yeah. Pounds of force. You got 54,000? Yeah, I got 24,000. Oh, jeez. That's what I got. 24,000. I got the. You got ne negative, we reject. That can't be negative. I, It'll be positive. It has to be positive. Well, um, uh, I don't understand. When, when you send it to uh, negative 18, they cancel. This? What? No, well, no, because you got two nines times this one. This is a negative here. Cubed is negative. This will become a plus. This will become a minus. This stays a minus. And they're the same value. Um, no, there's no way. Oh, no, there's no way. That can't be the same value. Because four times that and two ninths times that, that can't be the same value. Yes. So it's 24,500. Everybody agrees? All right, what is it? 24,500. Okay, if you guys agree, I will agree with that. So we need to build this thing of material that will withstand 24,576 pounds of fluid force, okay? So what do you get? Some cheap plastic thing, put it in there, breaks the first night, okay? Whatever. All right, I'm gonna give you a problem to do, fluid force problem. You're gonna do it, and then we'll see where we are, okay? Enough people get it right, we're gonna be done. Enough people get it wrong, then we'll do another one. 10 times harder. So here we go. So, after telling the owners of SeaWorld, you're going to have to buy a steel door to withstand the pressure of 24,576 pounds. They completely redo their, their thinking. And what they're going to do instead is put in a rectangular door here at a depth of four feet. And this door, instead of being six feet from top to bottom, is going to be four feet from top to bottom. 
and it's going to go out to the other one went out four feet. We'll still go out four feet though. So here's what I want. I want to know the force on this door under seawater where row is 64 pounds per cubic foot. Go ahead. That is pretty cool. Wow, is that cool. Huh. That's amazing, actually. Huh. Okay, pretty cool. It's, it's really, Carolina, what is it? Negative four. a few people getting it right. The original formula is fluid force is equal to density function, A to B, length of the rectangle times a negative Y dy. Okay, that's what it is. And in this example, you could use the symmetry and double it and go halfway across, or you can go all the way across in this one. It's easy enough to go all the way across. Because it's a rectangle. So you have it, you think? All right, I'll tell you what. Raise your hand when you have the answer. Don't say it. I will check it out. We need a few people to get it right, and then we can go. No. <laughs> And well, you know what's Oh, no, that is rough. Yeah. No rough. You're right. You know what's amazing? This is exactly this of the original. Where's the original problem? Take that answer, and it's exactly. Yeah, isn't it amazing how that come up? I didn't intend it to be that way, but it turned out that way. Just cool. All right, we have one. We need a couple more people. The Mohit's getting impatient too, so hurry up. Let's get to people.
Get a couple more people. We need a couple more. Okay. No, I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Why am I getting negative? Uh, you should be integrating from negative eight to negative four, bottom to top. If you integrate the other way, you'll get a negative answer. Negative eight to negative four, bottom to top. Let's get a couple more. So you see it up there? Row is equal to 64. Yeah. Take this number times 64. What do you get? Oh. And then let's see if you get what I get. You got what I get. That's it. Oh, I that's it. Oh, oh, never mind. I think I got it. That's it. Yeah, we're talking about it. Oh, I just read it. No, I'm still getting in there. Because you realize, Stella, what you said today about. Uh, her being smarter than you. <laughs> oh, you didn't say that. Yes, I did. Oh, you did? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was you. <laughs> <laughs> did you tell her that? Uh, yeah, of course. You did? <laughs> um, no, it was somebody else that said that. A kid that was here in 1993, he was here. And he had me for uh, Dippy Q's and Count Three. 
And now he's an engineer for Time Bond, but he's also works part time as a cop for Southampton. Southampton. Southampton Police. Yeah, he's a Southampton police guy. He does this part time, and he was here too. And he graduated, he, he was here in 93. He works for Time Bond, but he does that part time. Okay. All right, we got enough people now. No. Rats. But is this not right? Right? Because you take that, you take yeah, that's line, okay. you double it, and then that's the integral, right? The integral is 4y. You took the 4 out front? Uh, no, what happened? Yeah, I mean, it should have a y, but that's not a big deal. But it should be. Let me do it out. You're off. You're off by a bit, actually. Quite a bit. Okay? But he said, he, he also said that I remember uh, her to be a little bit smarter than you. And then he was right. He's right. He was, he was right. And you said the same thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so you're lucky. All right. Yeah, well, I, I agree That's with that. I agree with that. All right. I also agree with the other thing, too. So, Okay, here you go. You ready? All right, we've got enough people. All right. Rectangle. There's two ways to do the problem. I'm going to do it two ways. One way. I'm going to do the super simple way. Okay, the super simple way is to look at this rectangle and realize if you were to, it's what I said in the beginning, take this rectangle, it's got a vertical orientation. If we take this rectangle with vertical orientation and do this right about the midline and make it a horizontal uh, orientation about the midline, we can do the problem. So the fluid force on that object is equal to the density times the depth. Now, what's the depth around the midline is six feet. The area is the length times the width. This table or whatever this thing, the door is going to be eight feet by four feet, 32 feet. Okay? So if you take the, the density times the depth times the area, if you take 64 times six times 32, what do you get there? Somebody do this out quickly here. That's the answer. Okay, so you can do it that way because of the rectangle. It's not changing. Okay, so just flipping it around the midline works. But let's do it as an integral. Yes. So what would be your depth in that situation? Six. Right along the mid midpoint. Negative four and negative eight, midway through is six. Okay, so you just flip it around. That's one way. The other way is to use the integral, and let's do it. So the force is equal to, and again, I could double it, I'll double it, 64, negative eight to four. Okay, the length is this, it's a constant four. The depth is negative y. This is the formula right here. I'm going to double it. The length here is a constant for dy. So we end up with, uh, take this 8, a 4 out, 8 times this. It's 512. The, and take a negative out if you want to. Integrate y to get y squared over 2. From negative 8 to negative 4. Uh, this 2 can come out and give me a negative 256. So I get 16 minus 64. I get negative 256 times a negative 48. Now somebody do that out. And what do you get? I hope so. And that's it. Okay. And which, which I interestingly, I think, it's exactly one half the previous problem. Okay? Exactly one half. Okay, here we go. So, what should you be doing for Monday? Here's what you should be doing. The homework that's left to do in this chapter. Okay? One is on centroids of lambdas, a constant density, and the other homework's on the fluid force. Uh, Monday, I'm going to, uh, I'll take any questions you have. I'll give you some sample questions for the test. We'll take a look at the lab. Okay, for this lab that's coming up, and that's what we'll do on Monday. Next Thursday, we will have the test. The week after is 
spring break, we come back from spring break, and we start the next challenge. That's how it all works. Okay? See you. I just want to take some notes off the page one. Go ahead. I should just do it right. What's up? What's wrong? Uh, well, that problem, I, I had the right answer, like, instantly, and I'm like, wait, no, this is wrong, this doesn't look right, so I spent that entire time just trying to do random crap, like, I couldn't get anything that did better. Have a good night, see you next week. I'm going to take pictures. You're still recording. Take pictures here. Is this good?